Good morning and welcome back to the Professor and CEO. I'm Ben Gillam, CEO of Third Way. And uh, just a reminder why Rachel and I are doing these uh, webinars is that in this time of crisis, we felt that often businesses and the academic world don't speak and don't communicate with each other. And there's so many lessons that can be learned from the past, so many uh, great examples, so many great data sets that businesses can tap into and great minds to tap into as well to help navigate the crisis. And uh, I'm a great advocate of it. It's been wonderful for me uh, having Rachel to call upon. And uh, that's why we decided to do these webinars. Uh, Rachel? Hi, everyone. My name is Rachel Dorn, and I'm a senior lecturer in entrepreneurship. And my research uh, relates to entrepreneurs and entrepreneurship in times of crisis. And I tend to focus on areas relating to crisis management and resilience. And today we're talking about organizational values and rethinking organizational values in times of crisis. So I think we all possess, of course, different values and we all inherently understand what is meant uh, by the term value or values. Um, but I think it also helps to kind of step back a little bit and to think about how research um, relating to individuals and organizations has tried to define it over the years. So we can really think about values as being enduring and preferred beliefs and uh, or desirable end states that individuals and groups possess or hope to achieve that transcend specific situations that really guide their attitudes and their behaviors. And values include, but of course, are not limited to things like honesty and integrity and fairness, loyalty, power, authority, openness, and so on and so forth. And people really differ in terms of how they prioritize um, these and other values. And organizational values, in turn, are really those um, key components of an organization's culture. So they help to represent the collective, the shared beliefs that members within the organization possess that bond those members together and that help them move towards a common sense of purpose, a common goal. And organizational values also help to, uh, to represent what a business stands for, what people, what employees within an organization take pride in, uh, what they perceive to be important. So they are shared values that people within the organization attribute to that organization, either historically, but also values can be aspirational in nature. So they can represent what people believe the values of the organization should be, what they ought to be. And these things in turn, again, shape shape our behaviors as a result. And organizational values have been suggested as being one of the most defining characteristics or features of an organization. So what form do organizational values take? So organizational values tend to manifest in the underlying principles and philosophies and even standards of the organization. They're not necessarily captured in the organization's mission or it's in its competitive object objectives or even its strategies, although certainly organizational values influence all of these things. And they're also not necessarily captured in the day-to-day -day phrases or even slogans used within an organization, but they tend more so to be captured um, in the verbal and written statements of the CEO of the top management team. And sometimes these statements, these value statements are made uh, public as well to external stakeholders. So my first question uh, for you, Ben, is um, what are the values of your organization? What are the values of Third Way? And um, how, how have you communicated these, these values to your team, to your staff? over the years. And just a reminder before Ben, you answer that question, that we do have a Q&A function at the bottom of the screen. So if anyone has a question to, uh, to please write it in there and we'll respond uh, a little bit later. So over to you, Ben. I think um, what's interesting is this is year 11 for us as a business now and you know we've done that classic SME journey of you know me as the founder to 200 plus people and I think for the first four years you know the values were, were almost unspoken like it was more like a, a spirit of communication like amongst the business that they saw there was open sea, they, openness, they saw there was transparency, they saw there was a commitment to our clients, they saw there was a, a desire to improve things and a desire to change the industry in which we operated. But actually what, what happened was as we grew, that spirit sort of got diluted and we actually had to pull it back and go on, on an exercise of saying, hang on, these things really mean something, let's codify them, let's write them down. And um, 
we actually spent a long time last year doing that and we called all of the management team in um, and sort of went through an exercise to actually define what are the values that, we'll, that we hold and what do we want those values to do, which for us is drive behavior and also to be a big recruitment tool. It's to say to people as they come to join the organization, this is who we are. Hey, if you don't like it, that's fine. We're probably not the right people for you. And if you do like it, you'll probably love working here. So on to the values. Um, I mean, it depends how long you've got. Believe it or not, we've actually got nine values um, in, in the business. And um, they all, uh, they cover every aspect of what we do. Um, so um, our one, for example, the one we're probably best known for like internally is we talk about the strength of the wolf is the pack that actually whilst we celebrate individuals and individual talent and we want that to shine that we're a collaborative business we need the graphic designer to be aligned with the designer to be aligned with the pre-construction to be aligned with the delivery team to be aligned with the aftercare team to actually then support the finance team and the back of house teams to deliver a project to make sure the business goals are achieved in the way we want to achieve them so although you know it talks of unity and it talks about us as a company it also just really crystallizes in people's minds like how we want people to behave and how we esteem them. It's like be an individual, be strong, uh, you know, be all that you can be. But remember, like our, our real strength, our real magic comes when we're together. So um, I've said a lot there. So I'll, I'll throw it back to you whether, whether you want to hear some more or, or dive yeah, into maybe, it. Yeah, maybe give us a, a couple more. Cool. Well, um, interesting for us, like about our, our projects, our work, our output. I think that's an interesting one, that uh, it's passionate about the game passionate about changing the game and uh, both sentences were really important because you know, our job as office designers and workplace specialists is to create the perfect environment for companies to engage with their staff like if the staff are engaged they're more productive if they're more productive a business has a chance to grow and be more profitable um, and we want these space to be totally sort of engaging for them and the temptation is being designed at the forefront of something is that when someone comes to you with a problem you want to invent a new solution when sometimes the right solution is a tried and tested one, or it might be a small modification. And it was like driving the behavior into the team. It's like, look, even if it's a tried and tested solution, even if it's simple, still be passionate about it because the outcome for the client is so big, but equally be just as passionate when the opportunity comes to really change the game, like push design on an option, or change the industry, change the ways in which we work. I think that's been really powerful for us as a business in this crisis because we've had to change how we work. Like all of us now have a different relationship to our office than we had six or nine months ago. So being able to challenge ourselves to say, how do we remain passionate about working environment and what it stands for and what it does and how it generates engagement and productivity when people can't be there. It's been a real, real sort of challenge, but also something to be incredibly passionate about and sort of downbeat about. Right. Now, how would you say, so you mentioned doing this kind of um, values audit mm -hmm. last year, which I think is, re is really interesting. We might pick up on, on that again in a little while. But how would you say... I, I, I believe really strongly that your, um, your values should be sort of in the staff manual. Um, they should be they should be a language in which you communicate with each other. It's a way of setting the tone. It's like you know, if you're playing a sport, like there are uh, terminologies you'll use so you know where to go, what to do, or what's actually going on in the game. And like, I believe that's vitally important. So as you come into the business, every value we have is displayed. And it's displayed not in sort of like a poster on the wall, but it's some, some are graphical, some are, are digital but they're clearly there to provoke, like you can't mm -hmm. miss them. Um, and they're there to actually tell you and remind you about the behaviors that we're trying to drive into the business. Um, and they're there for our clients to see. You know, some people, uh, some businesses have their core values, which is very internally focused. And like that is the main purpose without a doubt, but we feel it's important to externally express them to our clients as well. So they're on display for our clients to see and to look out and to prod and to probe. And for example, the one that we have is sort of the transition from our office to the main client area is the company you want your children to work for. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we probably have on a weekly basis, a client uh, giving us a CV of one of their children or asking if one of their children come and work experience because of that sort of behavior and that kindness and those family values that we really value 
are there to be seen, they're on display, there's this sense of nurturing and pastoral care that people do want their uh, their children to go into. So, so that's sort of a great example of how you put it out there for the world to see. It provokes a behavior, but it also provokes a really great response. Fantastic, thank you. So we can also think about why values are important to businesses generally and um, when people are more or less likely to engage in them. So I think um, values are important because they help explain um, how collectively decisions are made within an organization and the behaviors, the actions that the organization as a whole uh, takes. It can also influence um, the direction that a business takes and how, how people are willing to respond or adjust to changes, whether those changes come from the marketplace, whether they come from customers, or whether or not they come from uh, indeed a crisis. So, so these organizational values are important for these reasons. They explain collective behaviors, but they also explain uh, on an individual level, individual behaviors as well, and to what extent people within your organization are on board with those changes, um, uh, to, what extent, to what extent they are committed to those changes. And some research suggests that um, changes in, in work patterns and work behaviors that are designed to um, reflect value still, to enable people to achieve their shared values, their common sense of purpose, are more likely to be engaged in, that people are more likely to be on board with those changes, um, when those changes, again, reflect those values. And it's also the case, and you, you touched on this a little bit as well, that people are more likely to engage with work um, and changes to their work in times of crisis or otherwise, when they perceive um, that the expressed values within an organization from people like yourself, Ben, um, and actual values are one of the same. So when the expressed values, the professed values, and the practice values are the same, then, um, then that's important. And people tend to be uh, more committed to their organizations. They tend to engage more in cooperative behaviors. They tend to have a higher degree of trust in their organization and to be more productive. When they perceive, however, there to be a values gap, so an organization says, oh yeah, well, we really promote, we embrace uh, benevolence and caring, but their actions during the crisis or otherwise suggest something uh, opposite to that. Then people have a problem with that and they're less likely to engage and be on board with those changes. When an organization professes that their values are fairness, but behind the scenes, um, it's unclear how to get promoted and some people are being rewarded and there's a lack of transparency in those processes, then there's a problem. When an organization professes to be uh, creative and innovative, but everything about their systems, their structures, suggest rigidity and, and centralization, then there's a problem. People are less likely to engage. So, so Ben, let me ask you. Um, you know the the way I try and use uh, values um, is as the moral compass. So as we as a, as a as a board and a management team are discussing the future and strategies and departments and whatever else it may be, is is having them there that when you feel uh, that perhaps you're thinking about the business in a way that might harm people or um, or. or or even if the decision is right, like you, you come back to those values and say, if we don't message this right, if we don't think about the human cost and the emotional cost this has, we're doing it wrong. So mm -hmm. that's that's how we we try and use them really as sort of that that final moral sense check. And that's not just sort of in in say a crisis and, and the challenging decisions you have to make. It's also in the advances that you try and make and where you place investment within the business. Um, and it's funny, you know, even I would say in a crisis, it, it's been hard sometimes that like you, you're so layers of focus on the problem at hand or maybe the potential problem at hand that you oh, it's almost a bit like um when everyone was stockpiling at the start and they go to the supermarket and all of a sudden you had people in their 30s pushing grandmas out the way this behavior that they never thought they would have you know right. i think there's there's almost like you know for the management team the ceo was you've got this laser focus on the problem and you're pushing everything away that you used to really value so funny if at my desk I've got a big post-it note, like remember the values, um, right there, sort of the first post-it note on my right-hand side, so that as I'm responding to emails or thinking or strategizing, it's there to sort of point me point me back to them. Um, so sorry, I've gone on quite a bit there, but I think- No, no, that's great. Thank you. the Perfect. moral compass, which um, which we should, we try and make decisions by. And
No, so I, I think it is. Um, it goes back to that the 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 core values don't just become part of the staff manual, but they mm. are they're there for all to see. So we we've talked before that we have like the weekly get together as a team, and right. there is a focus on the values. Like just it might not be all of them, but on a weekly basis, the the uh, the people team, the talent team here are thinking, well, what's the message we're giving to the staff this week, and how do we pull our values into that? to show them or to justify the behavior or point them in the direction of the behavior. Um, and I think that we, we work very hard at making the, um, the values personable as well. Uh, they're, 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 we, we've worded them in a slightly irreverent but individualistic way that as someone says them, it applies to them. Um, it's not just sort of just a group behavior. Uh, like, for example, one of ours is um, drive it like you stole it. So if someone's going to a pitch, if someone's like got a big challenge ahead of them, it's you just sort of go up and like drive like you stole it, like that idea of like bravery. But equally, we've got a moral do the right thing. So it's not recklessness, it's, it's bravery and just giving them that direction towards the task. Um, so yeah, as, as encouragement tools and also as just it's a little prods to, to move their, their, their operational work in the right way. Great, cheers. And uh, another thing I wanted to, to talk about is something that you've already mentioned, um, Ben, this kind of values audit. So thinking about how entrepreneurs within their organizations can try to ascertain um, not only um, what they believe to be the values of their organization, but what all team members mm -hmm. within the organization believe those values to be. So people from the top down to the bottom up and across all levels. Um, so trying to you know, unpack um, not only what pe people perceive those values to be, but what they perceive those values ought to be. Um, and also trying to unpack and tease out what um, personal values people may have and uphold. I think that's, in, that's important as well in trying to align those personal and those more professional or organizational values, because in doing so, and again, that's really how you try to engender employee commitment and uh, positive workplace um, workplace behaviors. And there's lots of different kinds of activities and I'm sure you did some through your values audit as well. One that I do with my students, um, for instance, is to get them, and I, it was an activity and I pulled off the internet and perhaps other people do them as well, is to get them to, to think about their values and to write one value down on a post-it note to have around 10 post-its in front of you. And then successively over time at say 30 second intervals to force people to withdraw a couple of those post-it notes. So they're left in the end with only a couple to help mm -hmm. them try to prioritize what's most important to them, what they really stand for. So I don't know if you want to um, add to that. Or yeah, no, I, I guess we were, um, as an organization, we were really, um, really fortunate to be um, introduced to a guy called Andy Clayton who uh, runs an organization called Petra and they facilitate this. And um, mm -hmm. very similar to what you just said, and like, you know, he, Andy is like, you know, like highly like perfectly intense for these situations that he's mm -hmm. forcing you into uh, defining why it's a value and why it's important. And it was amazing sort of um, having that facilitate to do that, how we did sort of find consensus of what our values are and also importantly what they were. I think what's, what's important that follows that is that um, you know, language is open to interpretation. So as an organization, we didn't just sort of land on what the value was. We landed on, well, what's the example of that behavior? Like whether it's a project, whether it's an achievement that somebody had in the business, so that we have this whole back catalog of here's the value, here's the example of how it's played out, like this is what that value looks like. And so going through that audit exercise, I don't think it should just end with, okay, we've taken some out, we've put some in. It's that you right. collectively say, and that is best demonstrated in this type of behavior, um, which is something very alive from, from your business that you can always point people to. And the beauty of that is that it should generate its successor. So there should always be a fresh example of that behavior of that core value being played out in the business. I think that goes back to that, that research piece that you mentioned, that when you are actually living those values, that people are engaged with it, they know where they stand, they know behaviorally where the limits are. And knowing where the limits are by, by behavioral patterns is far better than by instruction. And it, that's why it leads to sort of better outputs and better results for a business. Yeah, so it's important to, to lead with your behaviors, as you suggest. And you also uh, mentioned before that I think recruitment is key 
as well, mm -hmm. isn't it? So first, being able to um, articulate and share those values, but also to bring new people on board who also uh, represent um, those values in terms of what they are, what they ought to be. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's key as well. I think it's also to uh, really important um, to think about what your values are, especially especially now, not only in terms of guiding the direction of your business in general, but also in terms of thinking about one's response to the crisis, right? Because your values, I'm guessing, are ultimately shaping in part, are informing how, how you are responding. So if you're an organization, we've talked before as well about the importance of collaboration. And I think a lot of people, a lot of companies right now are saying that collaboration is, is key, is really important. So we see it on the news and by different social media platforms. But I think uh, it's important that if an organization says collaboration is one of its key values, you have to demonstrate that as well, especially now, right? So if your organization is collaborative, it's not about making decisions about recovery from the top down. It's about involving everyone across the organization, again, across all levels from the bottom up as well. So I think that's really key. And also thinking about um, not only how collaboration will shape your response and are you authentically being collaborative, but also thinking about the medium term, perhaps, if people are still on furlough, if people are working remotely or in a hybrid fashion, how can you maintain that collaboration over time? I don't know if you have any um, thoughts about that in terms of um, collaboration specifically or in terms of how maybe the crisis is testing some of your values in any way or how it's changing what you perceive your values to be or what they ought to be. It's, it's really interesting. I, um, I printed them out beforehand. So, you know, a confession, they're sitting in front of me because I was worried I'd have straight mm -hmm. stage fright and uh, forget them. Sure. Um, and as, you, as you're saying that, and as we discussed earlier, like, I'm looking at them thinking, are they taking on new meaning? Or are these still relevant? Like, is there something missing? And I think the, the honest answer is, is no, because like the key is in the core isn't it it's like they're, they're about what you as an organization truly believe now how that manifests in terms of output is different so collaboration great example we're a business that like it demands collaboration what we do we have multiple different experts working on a project to deliver it and traditionally it's been best done in an office we've got some people at the moment who need to shield who can't be in the office so we as an organization have to say, no, we believe in collaboration, but we know it's about the people and we know it's about the strength of the pack. It's like, how do we help the individual feel engaged? So for example, one of the things we've invested quite heavily in during uh, this lockdown period is we've really enhanced the AV setup in the, in the office. So we've changed the web cameras. We've now got people who are trained to actually control them so that their voice activated, but also movable. So the camera instead of it just being on 12 people and the person outside the room feeling quite isolated, it now zooms in on the person who's speaking to actually try and make it a more interactive personal experience for those not in the room. So it's staying true to like the people, it's staying true to our core value about aiming high and going higher and setting new standards. But it's also about driving the behavior we need in the business as well to the best, best way we can. So um, that's sort of the best way to look at them is like, yes, the output evolves, but the core should remain the same, should you know, still be your moral compass. Thank you. So I think, you know, thinking back about the crisis in general, not only can um, values, the values that organizations possess help to shape their response um, to what's happening right now throughout the pandemic, but it's also the case that the pandemic and crises generally help to sort of expose or test um, one's values. Uh, so they can expose, are we being authentic? We're saying, going back to, all of, to, to our previous discussion, we're saying this is a value, but in practice, is it a value? Or um, some people are thinking about sustainability now and going green, which is something that we'll talk about in our next session. And that's becoming more and more important to organizations. So maybe we need to focus, you know, it's been a value, but maybe, you know, not something that we've really emphasized, we've really focused on in the past. We want to bring that to the forefront. Mm -hmm now um, but I think also it's really testing people's values as well so some organizations who say you know they they value benevolence they value creating a caring culture are they really um, demonstrating that are they delivering on those values in this time of crisis so um, what comes to mind is is Starbucks in fact so you know big company the CEO of Starbucks at the start of the um, pandemic and, and the lockdown said to all employees that Starbucks would still pay them regardless 
of whether or not they were they were working and would raise the hourly wage of those who did continue to work and would also give them discounts on food and drinks. And they also demonstrated their benevolence by creating a hardship fund for employees and also uh, by giving store managers across different locations the opportunity to, to decide based on customer and employee sentiment when was the right time to, to be open. So I think that is hailed as a good example of a company that is trying to deliver on those values. Um, so I think it really does test values. Also what companies and what entrepreneurs need to be thinking about now is how can they enable other people? How can they enable their staff, their employees to deliver on those values? So what kinds of skills, what kinds of uh, tools, what kinds of processes are organizations putting into place? Maybe they're adding something, maybe they're taking something away like bureaucracy to enable people to, um, to do so. So I think that's really important. And also, I think during a crisis that entrepreneurs and CEOs and, and top managers need to be thinking about finding new ways to communicate their values and to reinforce their values, perhaps through the kinds of stories and achievements um, of staff throughout this period of time, um, also through incentive structures, and uh, perhaps also through rituals, old or new. So some of the people I've been talking to, and you just mentioned this earlier as well, um, who maybe traditionally didn't have a culture of on a Friday night sort of going to the pub at the end of the week. But now, and since the beginning of the pandemic, are actually getting together once a week online for a drink, for a quiz, whatever, to try to, again, create um, a bond or to um, reconnect with people to create a common and shared uh, sense of fun or, or purpose within the organization. So it's about creating new rituals as well. So I think in short, more now than ever before, it's really important for entrepreneurs to be thinking about what value, what they value as individuals, um, firstly, but also thinking about what are the values of their organizations um, and what they ought to be. And also thinking about um, how other people within the organization and, and stakeholders outside of the organization perceive those values to be or ought to be. And uh, really how these values are manifesting in their responses to the crisis or otherwise, and whether or not people are able to deliver those values during the crisis and what they need in order to do so. So, so Ben, how would you say you work to ensure that um, your employees within their way are able during the crisis to continue to deliver on third ways um, values. I've got to say, Rachel, as you as you were talking there, and I'm looking at the values. I'm sort of like reflecting on um, some of the the decisions I've made during the crisis. Actually, I'm I'm, I'm regretting actually some of them. Like uh, being honest, that not that they were necessarily uh, bad decisions or message badly, but they could have been truer to our values. And um, you know, I think that um, you know one. Do you want to share? The, yeah, do you know, I, th I think it will. It's um, an interesting one is one of ours is um, humble leadership, proud ownership. Uh, the idea that we all should feel proud of our, of our work and proud of our company and, um, and what we do, but that should be perfectly offset by a humbleness about how you lead. Um, and you know, I think that um, because there are so many challenges that a crisis throws up, that as a leader, you can, you can become withdrawn and when you become withdrawn, you can become aloof. And perhaps like there's been, I've been too withdrawn from the team and actually uh, haven't sort of humbled myself enough and actually, you know, been more present for people at different times um, as opposed to just in meeting times. So I can definitely reflect and say, hey, that's something I need to be doing better in the coming months. I think in terms of how we've looked about doing things um, during this crisis, it has been about um, really wanting to be as transparent and clear with the staff as we can be. Um, it's so easy to sort of not do the right thing in a crisis, and particularly in a crisis where you know, every business right now needs to be thinking about its cash flow, about its cash management, about its forecasting. And that has an impact on staff, whether that's in uh, yeah. expectations around salaries, whether that's expectations around commissions and bonuses, so on and so forth. I think what we've really um, tried to do is treat everyone equally um, across the organization, not to sort of highlight uh, certain people and sort of forget about everyone else. We've really focused upon like doing the right thing in terms of um, making sure that what we do, we can, whatever promise we make, we can actually execute as opposed to just doing a short term boost for enthusiasm and energy 
and then let people down further down the line. And I think also it's in that we've still really shown to the business that we as an innovative business who are passionate about changing the game have maintained a momentum in new products that we've brought to market, in new ways of communicating with our clients and a desire to sort of promote that uh, ingenious design intent that the team have here to keep putting that at the forefront of what we do and not sort of retreat into just a, a cost saving business. Um, so there I would say they're, they're the main ways looking at, at the values and reflecting on them. Yeah, I just had one more quick question and then I want to turn to uh, questions uh, from the viewers. So would you say Um, like my, I'm, no, no, I'm just, I'm just like really sort of trying to, trying to reflect on that. I think the, the one that perhaps really has stood out is that uh, the sort of the chief core value of the organisation that sort of sits as an umbrella over all of them. It's like, look, if in doubt on the other core values, go to this one. It's, um, it's the people, stupid. And um, the reason is it's something you're supposed to say in the mirror to yourself when you're annoyed with someone as opposed to calling other people stupid. And um, I think what's really come to the fore in the organization, and you know, I think this is, uh, this is played out in a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, reports I've seen, is that people have genuinely missed each other. Um, and I think actually, as opposed to perhaps new rituals, it's the appreciation of some of the existing ones of like where you meet people, where you have your coffee, um, bumping into people as you sort of come through the door. And I think it's actually what it's done for us is as people have reflected and reflected on sort of missing their colleagues and those interactions, actually brought to the fore a lot of the rituals that we didn't realize we had um, that had perhaps happened organically and encourage us to try and recreate them in other ways. So for example, now like you know, using various digital platforms, those sort of chance encounters people would have to talk about things, they're now Slack channels, like that people sort of meet at online and sort of have those sort of uh, discussions and moments or as best they can um, there. So uh, yeah, I, I'm so again, it's not sort of perhaps the clearest of answers, but I think that's what's come out of it. And what would be really interesting is hopefully let's say in a year's time when we, uh, we know what this new normal is and there's some type of normality, it's almost to reflect back on that question and uh, like almost say, well, what did we have before? What did we have during? And what's the hybrid of it now? Or have we gone to one of the others? So. But I think it is an opportunity to reflect on those those rituals of the past mm -hmm. and, and to maybe to try to find new ways to allow them to manifest. So I don't think it's an either or having to create mm -hmm. new rituals versus um, um, old rituals or abandoning one over the other. Um, so in terms of uh, some, some questions from our viewers, the first question is, um, I would say the, your, your, your company values, as I say, should be your moral compass. If one is so rigid that your instinct or, um, like your know, gut instinct for me is your subconscious recognizing a pattern and like pushing it into your conscious behavior in a certain way. So if that behavior, if that decision-making process is contravening your value, I would actually, I would like, I would question both. I think like that's what the value is there for, is to be the guide and say, hang on, objectively, is this value true of our organization? Is this value actually holding us back? If so, maybe I need to change it. Or it might say, actually, this decision I'm coming to um, goes against this value, and therefore, um, should I really be making it? So I, th I think like it's, it's, the, it's the, the check and balance that you need. Um, so that's how I would use it. And I, I, I don't think either the, is sacrosanct. I think, you know, companies evolve, they change every single year. So it's about, it's a great opportunity to assess what's there and uh, like the term you use, Rachel, audit it and say, am I making the right decision? Do I need to change something that's more about the, the values and the, the core of the business? Great. And uh, we, we have another really good question, which is, have any... A good that is a good question um hmm. i think the one that um i don't think they have 
But I think the one of our values that I'm perhaps wrestling with most at the moment is um, to say that the company you want your kids to work for. And that is about the behavior of like how you, you speak to others, how you interact with others, um, and speaking to your colleague in a way that you would want a uh, manager to speak to your child when they go into the workplace. And I, I, so there's a, there's, a, there's a call on the business to behave in a certain way. I mean, there's a call upon individuals to behave in that way as well. And in what is a really sort of emotional, intense, uncertain time, I feel that that's probably the one I look at and think, like, that's the one that gets, that's been tested most. Um, it's how do you, you find that balance between company and individual, staying true to that value. So um, I wouldn't say it's taken on a new meaning, but what it's made me do is think about like, what's the, the story? What's the example of what the right behavior is for that value? And trying to share that with people and share that with the business so that people stay true to it. Great. So uh, thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. That's it for today. And in our next session, we will talk about sustainability in and beyond the pandemic. So uh, I hope to see you soon. And uh, goodbye from me. Cheers. Goodbye from me. Thanks, everyone.